You know how we roll. It's the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. You know us by name because we've got all the big names. And this might be my walk-off shot, like George Costanza from Seinfeld. I might just drop this keyboard and walk right out of here, and I won't come back. This could be the biggest show ever. We've got Dave Olson, head coach from Vista Marietta High School, um, just named football coach just a couple days ago. We're going to talk to him in a couple minutes. We've got the new head coach at Harupa Hills, Citos Marides. What's up, Coach? How you doing, man? And you brought gear, so that means we love you even more. Brought you some workout gear, you know what I mean? <laughs> and of course, this is a real treat. And I, I hear he's like BFFs with David Zink now, breaking bread and hanging out. And But it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys, formerly of San Jacinto High School. And uh, David, we're excited to have you on the show as well, man. So we're going to talk Cowboys, we're going to talk San Jacinto, we might talk Wild Bill Powell, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a lot to get to. It's all brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website for more information on their training programs. Check them out. And later in the show, we'll talk a little about Corey Harkey. He plays for the St. Louis, uh, ooh, excuse me, Los Angeles Rams. Whoops. And uh, he's a, actually a free agent as of this month, or technically next month, I guess in March. So he wants to re-sign with L.A., um, but he's working out at Adrenaline. So we're going to talk about him a little bit later in the show as well. Remax Advantage. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. 909-307-5665 is the phone number. Give them a call. Ask for Joe Miller and tell them that the Inland Sports Show sent you. And spoiled. Quick quality oil change in Riverside. We appreciate their support. They are the best oil change in the business. Polite, great customer service. And we wouldn't put this on the sh put them on the show if we didn't stand behind them and believe in that. So we appreciate their support as well. So like we said, we're going to talk a lot of high school football, a lot of NFL too. we got David Irving in the house. And because football really never stops in our world. And we're going to get to Dave Olson in a couple minutes here from Vista Maria to high school. But first, let us bring into the show Cidos Marines, the new head coach for Harupa Hills. And coach, we have kind of a controlled chaos on this show. I don't know if you've listened to the Inland Sports Show before, but so whenever Olson checks in, we got to go straight to him because he's Zink, you said he's what, running a track meet with Coley Candell at Vista Marietta? Yes, it's an invitational track meet, yeah. So whenever he pops in, we'll go to him, but you brought the gear, you're excited to be part of the Harupa Hills family. You said that when you look at this program, you're excited about it, right? There's some good kids, and you know you feel like this could be a program that you called a sleeping giant, right? Definitely. I think that we have all the talent already in-house. It's just a matter of developing that talent, putting in that hard work. We've been lifting since January. I was lucky enough to get in there and get on campus and get started, so we're fired up, we're pumped up. Now, you're a former coach at Redlands East Valley, along with the great Kurt Bruick. Um, when you look at Coach Bruick's coaching style, are there things that you took away, like, you know what, I want to do that, or, I'm, you know, things that you took away that he does very well, that you kind of put that stamp on your program as well? Definitely. I think the thing that uh, attracted me to Coach Bruick, I had an opportunity to play for him as well. And when I seen somebody have that same passion that I had, that, you know, I just really, really gravitated towards it. And um, it's obviously something I emulate. You know, he's a legend. He won the state title, won the CIF title. So he's proven what he needs to prove. And I don't think he's done yet. And Harupa Hills actually played Rev in the first round. So that is a playoff possibility because you're both in the inland division. So it could happen. Uh, we're talking with Cedos Marinas, the head coach at Harupa Hills High School. Dave Olson from Vista Marietta High School is going to be checking in any moment. Vista Marietta was one of the big high-profile coaching jobs still open. Roosevelt High School, which, as far as we know, has not been filled. Has not. Riverside Poly not. still hasn't been filled. So there's a couple big-time jobs still out there um, as we're kind of inching towards spring ball. Have you guys got out there and tossed the, tossed the football around quite yet? Yeah, actually, this is our first week. We started position practicing, so our uh, offensive line was out there on Monday, our running back, quarterback, Tuesday and um, our receivers and quarterbacks on Thursday. So week one, baby, getting close. Well, football season never stops. And we'll have more with Coach Marinez in just a moment. But right now we're going to the Remax Advantage Celebrity Hotline. On the phone, the head coach of the football team, Dave Olson. Coach, uh, first off, congratulations on being, I guess, promoted to head coach at Vista Marietta. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's great, great school. And Big honor, I guess. So I'm, I'm real happy to be here. So I heard you're running around with Coley Candale today. Uh, track, right? First day of track season. <laughs> well, we have a big track 
track invitational, so there's uh, there's 18 schools here, and, and Coley and I are co-head track coaches, and he does basically he does the stuff on the track, and I do all the all the field events and coordinate all of our parents and, and volunteers. So it's, it's not, but it's uh, it's fun. It's good day. It's uh, like we say a controlled chaos. It gets a little nutty, but you still try to stay organized, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, Coach, let me ask you, when, when we were talking about the Vista Marietta opening, we said, man, from the outside looking in, Vista Marietta would be smart just to promote someone in-house because you guys you guys have a good thing going. You know what I mean? Like one of the assistants should just rise up, be the head coach, and keep what Coley Candell, um, you know, has built and keep that thing going. So when you found out that Coley was stepping down, was your first instinct like, hey, you know what, I'm going to apply for the job, or did you have to sit on it for a little bit and think about it? Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of thought from the beginning that I that I'd probably apply for it. I I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I had the support of, of the coaches that were already here. We have like 23 coaches on staff, which is, is an unbelievable number for a high school. And and uh, so I, I talked to a lot of people, and then I, I talked to our support staff, the uh, the equipment man and the <laughs> the bookkeeper and all of those kind of people to make sure that that everybody was kind of. Um, you know, was okay with me applying, and then and then I applied. You know, once I, once I kind of talked to everybody. So when you look at the program, I mean, obviously the expectations are sky high, and what Coley has done to get that program off the ground and get it to a level where it's recognized um, across the state and, and the and the nation for that matter. Um, is is there pressure going in to keep that going, or do you feel like I've got to change things up, or um, or just kind of um, continue what Coley put in place? Well, I think I think for the most part, a, a program this successful, you're going to keep a lot of the you know a lot of the things in place. You know, I mentioned the coaches. We've got a lot of almost all the coaches coming back. Um, you know, the uh, traditions, a lot of the traditions. I, when I applied for the job, I, I when I was interviewed, I said you know it's a little bit like going into a you know on a on a smaller scale, but a little bit like going into a Notre Dame or a, or a USC. You're not going to go in and just change a bunch of things for the sake of changing it. Um, of course, you know there's always little things here or there, but for the most part, I think um, one reason that that they hired me is because Coley and I share a lot of the same kind of uh, you know core values, a lot of the same uh, practice style, and and that kind of stuff. And and so I don't see changing a whole bunch of stuff. So looking ahead to next season, um, you know your guys obviously better than we do. Who who's coming back, and why are you op- optimistic for next season? Well, I think we've got a really good core of skill guys coming back. We have we have Colby Bots at tailback, and and you know uh, Carson is back at quarterback. We've got a really good um, mix, and then you know I think I think the defensive front, you know, with three of the four kids back there, and I think that's going to be a strength. You know, it's uh, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of uh, you know a lot of good kids here, a lot of good athletes, and, and uh, I think it's a real good place to be. Now, see, Coley's still going to be around. He's still the athletic director, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> do you think you'll go to him, or do you think he, uh, you know, he'll he'll lend his advice when asked? Well, he, you know, he, uh, I'm sure his door will always be open. He, you know, he wanted to make sure that I understood, you know, and I think all the candidates that applied for the job, he wanted to make sure that they understood that he's not going to be looking over our shoulder, he's not going to be questioning our calls, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, you know, it's funny because I, you know, I told him in my my final interview, I said, you know, one of the things I've as I make this little outline, it's kind of okay. Uh, I got to check about equipment. I got to check with Coley on that. And it's, there's about five things that I got to go to him, you know, just off the bat. So we'll, we'll have meetings next week. But uh, you know, he's he's uh, you know he, he definitely wanted to spend more time with his daughters, and he's made it real clear that he's not going to be you know he's not going to be you know up in the box calling plays. So. Well, he's like one of the busiest guys, head football coach, you know, co-head coach with the track and field team, the athletic director. Like, he did a little bit of everything, it seems like, over there at Vista Marietta. Yeah, yeah. He's always running around someplace. So, Coach, uh, are you going to retain pretty much everyone on the staff? Do they want to come back, including the D.C. Uh, Peterson? Well, I think, um, you know, I've, I've talked to everybody, most people, and, and the people that I haven't talked to, I'm going to talk to next week. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure if everybody's going to stay. I don't know if some some people may want to switch levels. You know, um, you know, it's just it's kind of like that. But I think the majority of the coaches will stay. Well, coach, we're excited for you. Congratulations on this gig. Uh, we love Vista Marietta High School, and we think you're going to do a great job. And we appreciate you taking the time. We know it's a crazy Saturday. Is is it the saddle up relays or something like that? 
It's the Saddle Up uh, Invitational. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of the first, uh, you know, it's what we call it the Saddle Up. It's the first big Invitational of the year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great environment. So if anybody wants to come out and watch track, it's a beautiful day for it. And a lot of good athletes out here running around. So. Oh, yeah, by the way, Vista Marietta's track and field team, one of the best <laughs> ever, you know, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I think our track team might be the best, you know, our boys, we might be the best team in the nation. We're pretty good. So, got some amazing athletes. Well, Coach Olson, we really do appreciate the time. We'll let, we'll let you get back to the track meet, but congratulations, and we look forward to seeing you this fall. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, that's Coach David Olson, the new head football coach at Vista Marietta High School, joining us here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Like I said, we're talking a lot of football today because football really never dies in our world. We always keep it going. There's always something to talk about. Uh, we talked about some of these head football uh, football coaching vacancies that are still out there. One that is not, Harupa Hills. We're talking with Coach Marinez here. Um, coach, let's go back to Kurt Bruick. We were talking about him because we're a big fan of Kurt Bruick, obviously. So you played and coached with him, you said, right? Yeah. Have you seen a change in his style? Like, is he the same guy, like, when you were playing for him and then when you're coaching alongside him? Oh, definitely. He changed a little bit. Um, you know, he's still who he is at the core, but I would say he was a little uh, rougher and more demanding when you were... in his younger days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the, the, the coach-player relationship is a little bit different than uh, being, like, his OC or DC, right? Oh, uh, yeah, and I, I would say, you know, he's harder on his coordinators than he is on his players. He... That's kind of his philosophy. That's kind of his style. It's, he puts it on his position coaches and his coordinators. And, you know, he's on us instead of being on the players. He's kind of, you know, yelling at us to the players so that they respond. You know, they're supposed to be playing for us, and that's what he's trying to do to get those kids motivated by coming at us like that. Do you have his style? I mean, because he wears the red pants and all the splashes. Oh, no, stuff. I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> you can't? I can't. I got my you own little try, style. Man. You know, I try. You Come know. on, red pants and a white belt? That's yeah, that, great on you. That's all. No, I can't do that, man. That's his. I can't jock him like that. <laughs> He's got to do that. Will you lead him out? Yeah, he does that little, he sways back and forth, and he oh. gets the, the guys running out onto the field. That's the low-key secret people don't know about. That boy could dance. Man. Oh! He could dance. He could really dance. Break, so. Breaking news. Are you writing this down, yeah, David Zink? You got a column to write on the show. You know, everybody's talking What's about, style? Uh, everybody's talking like Dabo and all that. That's the big thing. And in college, watch that man dance. Kurt can, Brewing. Oh, yeah. That's where, that's where it ends and that's where it starts. So it we got to right go get Kurt dance. <laughs> we got to get him dance. And I tell him, like, uh, I think you guys should make him pop lock. That's his, like... That's his thing. Right <laughs> That's there. his thing. Yeah, he could do that pretty good. You well, know, he's from the '80s. He's a Renaissance man because I even asked him. No, wait, hold on. Because I even asked him because he's got little girls. He's got little kids, and I was like, "Hey, do you uh, do you watch Frozen?" And he's like, "Dude, I let it go like two or three times a day, man." He's like, so he dances. He watches Frozen. He's a great dresser. I mean, he's a Renaissance man. There you go. <laughs> Not all kinds of secrets. So, Coach, are you going to do some seven-on-seven, seven, start throwing against some teams? Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, Kurt Brook's not a big thing, you know, a big seven-on-seven uh, seven guy, but, you know, are you going to throw some teams and maybe rep, sneak Rev in there? Yeah, um, the, you know, I, I kind of subscribe to that same philosophy, and interesting thing that we do is uh, we dual practice with other teams, and, um, and there's some seven-on-seven, seven, but there's also some one-on-ones with the O-line, little inside run, and then even a little team with out pads, you know, with guys that I trust, other coaching staffs that I trust, like uh, Summit, us and Summit have already talked about doing some things like that. You know, these kids are already playing a ton of seven on seven in their little private teams and all that. So yeah. we try to bring the more realistic football approach to practice. So you're uh, you're coming from Gladstone where you were the head coach. Yeah. So what did you get from that experience as being the guy in charge and that you can, you know, take to Harupa Hills and kind of start laying that foundation? You know what? It was a great experience. It was a smaller school, so I had to do a lot of it. It wasn't, you know, didn't have the uh, all the resources that Redlands East Valley had and, and the support that Redlands East Valley had, that uh, Coach Brewick uh, established. So it, you know, taught me. You know, I remember like Coach Brooke and Coach Tessitore, who've been a head coach yeah. in D.C. over there, and they'd be talking about, you know, ordering equipment and purchase requisitions and all this other stuff, and I had no it's idea. It's all the non-football yeah. stuff, right? I had no Behind idea. The scenes. I had no idea, and honestly, you know, it bugged me that I didn't know that stuff, and I wanted to. I wanted to be, uh, you know, a better coach, so that's why I took that job, and it was a great learning experience, and um, I expect big things from them this year. And uh, but I just couldn't pass on an opportunity like Arupa Hills and to work for Kristen, Kurt's sister, and you know the, her background and where she comes from. Yeah, it's like you never left the the Bruick family, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> with Kristen Braun as right, the uh, right, athletic right. director. Right, right, right. Yeah, a student taught for uh, you know the legend Coach Bruick, the retired legend, and then I coach with the current legend and uh, Kurt Bruick, and now I work for the sister. So. <laughs> 
Well, Coach Marinas, before we let you go, be honest. You walk on campus, and they're probably saying, what position do you play? Do you just transfer in? Are you the quarterback or are you the DB? I mean, like we say, you got a baby face, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I get that sometimes, man. Uh, I still get stopped by security sometimes. You look like you can play still. Yeah, and I started teaching, you know, at 23, and I was getting that, and I was like, it'll stop in about 10 years. It's 12, 13, <laughs> still going right? strong? So everybody tells me it's a good problem to have, though, right? It is, man. Yeah, It yeah, is yeah. a good problem to have. Well, Pep's actually younger than you and looks 10 years older than you. I'm old? Yeah. No, no, come on. <laughs> Everyone's throwing me under the bus. I'm short. I'm old. <laughs> I'm dumb. Come on. Well, Coach Marinas, we appreciate the time. Best of luck at Rupa Hills. We love the gear. We'll put some up here in the studio as well. And uh, if you're going to do some seven on seven spring, you know, the combined practices you were talking about, let us know. We'd love to come out and shoot some video as well. Awesome, awesome. Next time I come, you got to let me bring some of my players and show them off to you. Let's do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You said you got some dudes, right? I got some dudes, man. I can't wait to show you guys. All right. That's Coach Cedos Marinas, the new head football coach at Harupa Hills. When we come back on the Inland Sports Show, we're going big time. Literally, I mean big. I mean, David Irving's massive in here. I can't believe he actually fit into the studio. We're going to talk San Jacinto football. We're going to talk about the NFL. We're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. And David doesn't know this yet. But we're going to give him a mock Wonder League test, like they take at the NFL Combine. Are you ready for that, David? I have no choice. You have no choice. He's already here. He's going to do it. When we come back on the one and only Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. We focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want a, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. any sales on them. We do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. specific to what they need. A lot of people actually come in here for the performance training and also we have our travel ball program with our softball and baseball teams. Our performance training definitely to get quicker, stronger, and faster. on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want a, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time.
Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Just talked to Dave Olson, the new head football coach at Vista Marietta High School, the new head football coach at Harupa Hills, Cedos Marinez. Like we said, high school football never stops. And now we're going to talk a little NFL, maybe a little more high school football as well, with David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys. This is a real treat. We're excited to have him back in studio. And if you guys don't know his backstory... You worked, so David, go ahead, you can just pick up the mic. Um, oh, yeah. You worked at Home Depot. It was just for a night, right? It was one night, yeah, was, but you worked yeah. at Home Depot and something clicked, right? Yes, one night. Um, it was actually, what, it was on the first, I guess. I was supposed to do training for uh, building walls in the warehouse. I guess everyone uh, called off, so I wound up taking like four or five trucks to myself that one night. <laughs> I wound up getting sick, actually, caught the flu somehow, and I, I realized that wasn't for me. <laughs> he caught flu from regular job work. <laughs> He's like, no, warehouse no, no, work. No, 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 no. Warehouse I got flu. sick of warehouse work. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. We're going to do this football thing a little bit longer and see what happens. Well, obviously it panned out. You're with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, how was your first season with Dallas, and, and what are you going to remember about your season uh, with the Cowboys? Oh, I'm going to remember Wednesday practices. I'm going to remember those. It was a, it was a great, uh, great experience for me, you know, not really knowing what I was going to do. Um, you know, playing with the Cowboys, and it was tough. It was uh, one of the hardest things I had to do. The competition was just insane, but it was great. I learned a lot about myself as a person. Uh, I pushed myself to go harder than I actually ever have before. Uh, it was just a great experience all around. Here, so this will shock you, Pep. Why? Shock me. So, David, <laughs> you went to the team. Yes, Who sir. was the most helpful person to you your first season, the guy that you could lean on and he would actually – tell you what you needed to do when you didn't know and help you when you felt like you needed it? You know, uh, all the defensive line helped me, but, uh, you know, Greg Hardy probably spent spend more time with me. See, they spin Greg Hardy as a bad guy. I know, everything him you out. see in the media, it's He's like, doing Christian man. work here. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, so we're talking with David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys, um, a San Jacinto guy. So what do you remember from your high school ball? Bill Powell was your head coach, right? Yeah, he was pretty scary. A lot was he? A lot scarier then than he is now. He's a good dude. We love Wild Bill yeah, Powell. He's a great dude. He, he, he's a great dude. You know, he's always supported me uh, since I met him through the ups and the downs, and he's still around. He, he's a great dude. So we're, uh, if you're watching this live and amplified right now around the world on the Inland Sports Channel on YouTube, we've got a picture up. You swat, looks like swatting the ball away from Cam Newton. Oh, yeah. Do you know what play I'm talking about? I do know what play you're talking about. How sweet was that play? It was pretty sweet. I wish I was like <laughs> a half second, you know, quicker. But it, it was great even, you know, being on the field with all those guys, you know. It, it was a great experience. It's a great, like Cam's reaching back, like he's I'm ready to let out. it fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Are you pro or con Cam? Oh, you put me in the Oh, right, so yeah, look, they got look, him. So look. Cam, he's a great player. You know, you can't take that away from him. I have met him uh, before I, I was in the NFL at a football camp out in uh, San Diego. And, you know, he was a cool dude, and then I played him, and uh, those feelings kind of started to fade. He talks <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, he gets in your head a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's part of the game. Uh, I get in people's heads, too. So, do you, What do you say out there? Are you, are you a uh, talker? Uh, yeah, I can't really say what I say. <laughs> but I talk quite a bit, yeah. You don't say fun stuff like, I'm going to take you to the garden section at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out. If only, that'll probably freak them out more. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, that guy's crazy. <laughs> We're talking with David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys out of San Jacinto High School here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Dallas seemed like a good fit for you. You were what, on the practice squad with Kansas City when you got yes, that sir. opportunity. Yep. Yeah, it is definitely a great fit. You know, I went in there and uh, I didn't really know their defense or anything. And uh, they just gave me my pads and said, hit this hole. <laughs> it made it real simple for me. And I mean, it just worked out, I guess. So how does that work? So you're you're in Kansas City, right? Yes, and then you, just, you just get a call one day like, hey, you just been signed by Dallas. Yeah, I was uh, actually, um, they had traveled to play Green Bay. So I had free time being on practice squad. So I drove down to Iowa State University, my college, just to hang out with some friends, roommates. And I actually got the call out there. I was with my daughter. I was with Angela. Uh, I had to actually stop what I was doing, drive back home to Kansas City, pack up everything, get them on the flight in the AM, and then I left shortly after that. And so then it just crazy. started from there. The rest is history. Yep. 
Because, uh, you know, we all love Google. I was Googling your name, and, and like all these Dallas Cowboy experts are saying, man, David Irving's a guy that we need to keep an eye on, that he's a guy on the rise, like it's going to make a huge impact. How does that make you feel when the Cowboys, you know, are, see you as such a value? It feels good, and, you know, uh, I like the pressure. I kind of feel like, you know, I have to. It's more of a motivation now. I mean, everyone's watching now. I'm not just, you know, starting off, who is this guy? I've actually shown what I could do. And the coaches actually told me that you keep showing us what you can do, we're going to keep asking for more. It's, it's good, you know, so I'm, I'm excited about that. So, and now you're back, you're living in, in, in Moreno Valley currently mm -hmm. and uh, doing some off-season work. You're healing a wrist that was broken, right, yes, right sir. at the end of the season. So, uh, hurt left wrist, so he's kind of held back a little bit so he can get that healed. They want him just to rest. <laughs> but I do nothing, right? beyond that, you're, you're you're helping out. You're going around. You're going to San Jacinto. I know the good things you're going. He's going to schools and talking to kids. And what do you talk to when you go in to talk to a, a classroom of kids? Mm -hmm. What do you talk to them about your story and how, how how they can you know? Is it an uplifting thing? Is well, it a? It's an uplifting thing. Well, um, I always say you know, had I had an older brother to kind of talk me through some things, I would have had an easier path. And you know, I just talk to them and tell them the things that. I should have done better. Uh, the biggest thing was stay out of trouble. You know, um, you could have all the talent in the world and you could keep your grades up how I did, but one mistake could cost you a lot. You know, I'm very, very fortunate to be where I am today, and I just want to help out how I can, even if it's just a little advice. And you're also going to speak at the National Football Foundation Inland Empire Coaches uh, yeah. Dinner, right? Yeah. Uh, you're going to be the MC at, right, Pat? Yeah, and I've got... So he's the, he's the speaker. He's yeah. the speaker? Yeah. Yes, you're going to be there? Yes, sir. We'll have another little rendezvous. Okay, well, I, I'm, <laughs> gonna, I'm not going to tell you too much, but i got a little something for you with, <laughs> that night. I can't All say right. much more than that because I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <All right. laughs> We're talking with David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys in San Jacinto High School. Uh, the NFL Combine is going on right now, right? we got Sua Cravens there from Vista Marietta High won't, School. Won't run a 40. He won't run a 40. Is that no, he's waiting, he's waiting until his pro day next month. Uh, it sounded to me like he was saying that they were saying how fast he was running, but they wanted to get him faster, which says he wasn't running that fast. He wanted to work on a little bit more, right? Yeah, you know. But he's going to linebacker, right? How fast do you have to be to be a linebacker? In this league, pretty fast. Uh, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> and then uh, also Kenny Clark, who, man, he's, he's like shot into the first round. Like He could be a first round guy from... Uh, Carter High School in Rialto out of UCLA. That's no surprise to us. We knew that. No, we knew that two a, years ago. He's a stud. I remember when he played in the Inland Empire All-Star yeah. Classic, and they said, who stood out? Like, who's the guy who just dominated? And we're like, well, San Bernardino lost, but Kenny Clark was clearly the best player on that field that Destroying night. Destroying people. He was a man. Uh, so anyways, we bring up the combine because there's a lot of random, bizarre questions they ask with this Wonderlick test. Uh, David... Did you go to the combine? Were you not invited? Uh, no, I was not invited. That is a shame, and we feel terrible about it here on the Inland Sports Show. Don't we, Zink? I, I, I personally want to make sure that we give him the experience. You know, that's what I thought, too. That'd be great. That, wouldn't that be great, David? That. I can't teach him anything about what he's doing on the field, but I can show him what it's like <laughs> from the Wonder Lake test or getting asked too many questions. So we're not going to make you run any 40s or see what your vertical is, but we are going to ask you some of these questions that they get at the combine. Because we want you, we feel bad. We want you to okay. have that experience. Understandable. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So here's some of the questions that they're asking at the combine. And there's four of them. Nothing too serious here. Which team do you pick in Madden and why? They want to know why you pick that team. Why I pick that team. To so picture honest. yourself as a young David Irving before you're with the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. When you your were, buddy rolls up and says, hey, you want to play some Yeah, Madden? you're sitting at your home in San Jacinto on a lazy Saturday. You know what? Um, I honestly, all right, now this is, this is weird. Everyone's going <laughs> to think I'm crazy now. Let's but, get weird. Uh, this is hard to say. Um, I don't really know too much about football, the history, watching it, you know, things like that. So I don't pick any historic teams. I usually pick the team that I'm most familiar with. And, uh, and that was? At the time, it was the Chargers. Okay. You know, they sponsored my middle school. Uh, they had a program called Charging Forward, so they were just my favorite team. I was born in San Diego. And, oh, there you go. You know, so I, I always stuck with that San Diego when I do play Madden. So there you go. That would have been so a good answer, he right? Would be, he, so you would yeah. call yourself a LaDainian Tomlinson slash... Yeah, that was my guy. Philip yeah. Rivers guy? Yeah. You like LT. the bolo tie? Yeah, uh, you know what? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm just going to drop that down real quick. <laughs> All right, so our next question from the Combine is, 
this is a real question. I didn't make this up. I can make up some weird things. This is not one of them. How many different things can you do with a paper clip? Wow. That is a real, that's a real, real I question. I actually study paper clips, so. Then you, this is right up your alley, David. <laughs> this is wow. perfect. Are there, is it a multiple choice, or do I just throw anything out? Anything. What, what can you do? What can you make? What can you do with a paper you clip? You can hold paper. You can uh, poke people with it. You can, uh, I don't know how, but you can pick locks with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of things you can do with paper clips. All right, we'll take that answer. That's pretty good. We'll take that answer. We, we draft with the rubber band, you can shoot it at people. See, there you go. I made a living at that in, in junior high. <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's another real question All from right, the combine. Listen, it's it. getting serious now. Mm -hmm. Real serious. What animal would you describe yourself as? So basically what they're saying is what am animal would you be and why? That's another real question from the mm -hmm. NFL combine. I'd probably be a lion. Uh, I am a Leo, by the way. Uh, I like lions. Uh, they're aggressive, they're explosive, they're uh, fast, strong, they look cool. Yeah. I like everything about them. Not to mention they're king of the jungle. That's exactly. true. Exactly. Top, <laughs> top of the food chain, right? <laughs> and finally, if you could pick one superpower, what would it be and why? I would have to say if I could choose just one. Just one. I would be able to control time. Oh, oh man, that's a curveball. Man, that's that was that's good. Deep. That's deep I, right first there. round pick. I think we just I think we just signed him. I think, I think we're gonna draft him. That's why the Cowboys are so excited about him. That answer right <laughs> that, there. <laughs> Middle practice, I'll stop, take a quick nap. <laughs> oh, going, everyone's like, wow, this guy. Never so like gets you're tired. getting you're getting gassed. <laughs> so so the team's so the team is uh, going. The team's driving on you, and you're getting gassed. You just stop time. Stop. Everybody just, catches their yeah, breath. Hold up. We're good, and then turn right back. Like that moment with Cam Newton, you're like, hold on, let, let, let me, me just pause, pause this for just for a second. Let me get my hand about the other foot <laughs> forward. Exactly. You just strip the ball out the fumble. Handy. You're recovered. Man, yes, it's all good. Who's yes, who's your homie on the team? Who's the guy uh, that you know? I got a lot. You got downtime. Who's the guy you hang out with? Uh, downtime. If I'm not with anyone in the D line room, I'm probably with Rod Smith, uh, Deji, Olatoye, uh, Lucky. That's my boy, Lucky. Um, I mean, everybody on the team, really. We're, we're all really, uh, really close in a group. So when you're not playing football, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Are you a, big, are you a, you know what? a movie guy, comic book guy? you like other sports? Uh, I do like other sports, although I can't play them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I actually play video games. Super Smash Brothers is probably my best video game. Yeah? If anyone wants to play, please <laughs> see me. Hey, what's your Twitter handle? We'll have some people hit you up. Uh, do you remember it? <laughs> no, I actually don't use Twitter too much. I'm, I'm an IG guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm an IG guy. But, uh, you know, it's funny. I was talking to Cam before uh, in San Diego. I think he plays Super Smash Brothers. And, Cam, if you would like to play me, you can see me too. Oh, wow. man. That's a call out right there. We should do he that. He just called Cam out. Maybe yeah. do it for charity. Cam versus David. That would be Rupert. awesome. There we go. There we go. We can put something the together. The Inland Sports Smash. What's it called? Smash Brothers? Super Smash Brothers. What is that? I've never, on the Wii U. I know I just jumped the shark, man, because I have <laughs> no idea what he's talking about. On the Wii, right? On yeah. The Wii U, yeah, it's a classic Nintendo game. I've been playing it since I was probably five. Five or six, yeah. Man, so you're a seasoned pro. Uh, I yeah, cue up, up the Nintendo music. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, at what point in your life did you say, you know what? I think I'm actually going to go to the NFL. Like, were you in high school when you thought, you know, I could make it? Or maybe it was that night at Home Depot when you're like, gosh, dude, i got to give football another chance here. Yeah, well, I mean, it's funny. Growing up, my mom always told me uh, we don't have money for college. You were either going to go to the Marines or you were going to get a scholarship. I uh, was fortunate enough to get a scholarship. And I thought all was well until I got uh, kicked out. Um, you know, at that point, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I figured out pretty quick at Home Depot that Home Depot was not what I wanted to do. Uh, so I just trained for my pro day and had one at Sanderson High School. Coach Powell set it up. John Bankhead was training me a little bit. and uh, Wait, so you had your pro day at San Jacinto High School? Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> so which teams actually showed up to San Jacinto? Were they like, where are it we? Was, <laughs> it was uh, the Cowboys showed up. The Cowboys. Jeez. Nine teams. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That makes it a lot simpler. <laughs> Zeke knows. There were nine, and the chart or the the Chiefs and Cowboys were both there, and he went to the Chiefs, and then the Cowboys stole him off the, off the ah. Chiefs roster. 
Literally, right? Because they literally. just claimed you because you yeah. were on the you practice squad. And they're gonna they had to sign him hey, for three years, see? literally, to get him. <laughs> yep. There you go. What? No, we're just making fun of you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's no, we're just making fun. Of you. No, I should say Greg was making fun of you, He's not me. Fun I'm of me. your boy. Why would I do that? You gotta throw somebody else under the bus. That's right. <laughs> Quickly. We do that on the show quite Quickly. a bit, actually. Nick's not around to beat up, so they beat me up. And then when I'm, I, I wasn't around like a week ago, and they just laid into me. We had a very famous author come into the show. He wrote a book. And David will appreciate this. He wrote a book, and there's a sports reporter in the book that's based on David Zink. And we asked him, you know, how did you come up with this character? What's, what's this sports reporter in the book all about? And he described him as a monster rising up from the swamp that pees on himself. <laughs> And we're like, that is no lie. That that's is no, the that's what he said. We're like, oh, that's, that's Zink. He described Zink to a T. That's... <laughs> what are you going to do, man? Everyone's got a role in life, right? Yeah, man. So we just laugh at ourselves. But anyways, um, we're talking with David Irving here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM, star defensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, when you're back in town, you you know, you talk to Bill Powell, and I know Zink's brought this up before that, you know, he always... He always like likes to finish his conversations with what is it, Zinc, that Bill Powell would always tell David uh, you know, about Home Depot, right? Yeah, it's better than Home Depot. <laughs> Anytime I'm feeling down about anything, you know, I call Coach Powell. Oh, I got a flat tire. Oh, I'm so sore. And he says, "Well, think about Home Depot." <laughs> it ends the it. conversation it pretty ends quick. The conversation. Yeah. <laughs> David, do you ever think like, what if, what if I just said that night at Home Depot, you know what, I'm kind of being a big baby, I'm just going to power through, this isn't that bad, I've got a job, I'm happy, and you never went and tried to do the football thing. Ooh. Do you ever think about that, or do you try not to? No, I try not to, because <laughs> I, I, I just couldn't see myself working another day at Home Depot, to be honest. That was, that was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, what were you One like day that? at Home Depot, <laughs> totally broke him. You're a broken man. Broken man. <laughs> set Home Depot set me straight. <laughs> so you were breaking bread with David Zink the other night, right? Yeah. We How had was a good that? Time. Was that okay? No, it was a great time. We had a good time. Do you have good table manners? I mean, was it everything okay? I didn't eat anything. <laughs> what? You they just bought dinner? some They just bought some wings. Big <laughs> <laughs> sounds. This is awful. This is just wrong. This Greg's show, like this show has gone off show the rails. With weird sounds, man. <laughs> You, really wait, you went to dinner didn't eat anything? We didn't. It, it wasn't like dinner. We sat down to have a drink and, and, and talk, shoot the breeze, you know. Well, let me ask David then. What, I mean, because obviously you need to eat. It's your fuel. You know, you need to burn those calories. So what's like a typical meal? Like when you sit down and are you able to eat like, I don't know, three, four, five thousand calories because you're just training and working? Yeah, I, you know, I actually I push myself until I'm full, then I keep going. <laughs> no, I've actually been uh, wow. prepping lately. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've been trying to meal prep, trying to diet right. You know, no matter how hard you work out, if the diet's not there, you're not going to see much results, so. Well, it looks like it's working, right? I mean, geez. <laughs> so it's thank you, thank two, you. Two Jumbo Jacks for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a cheat meal? Like, if you're like, dude, I just, yeah, I for do. seven days straight, eating clean, hitting the gym, I'm just going to go off the rails on this one. It, I do, and it is pizza. Pizza, it's like my favorite. Wait, when you say pizza, though, are we talking like a whole pizza? I'm talking like, yeah. Pizza. <laughs> Probably meat lovers with extra cheese, stuffed crust, you know. And just go for just it. Just go for What's it. What's your favorite brand of pizza? What, where, where do you go when you get pizza? Maybe they'll give you an endorsement if you drop it right now. Uh, right. Well, say yeah. Papa John. Say Papa John. <laughs> <laughs> no, Take right. it for Peyton Manning. You, know, you can be funny. that guy. Yeah, it is. It's either Papa John's or Pizza Hut. Uh, we all, I always go back and forth. You can't really go wrong with either. Can't go wrong with either. <laughs> pizza is pizza. David, what are you hoping for next season? Are you hoping to get a you know a starting job and, and hold on to it and stay there? Are you you know hoping to win a Super Bowl? Like, what kind of goals, expectations are you setting for yourself and the team next year? Um, well, I've really been uh, making goals personally, and uh, you know I would love to start you know get out there and uh, just keep improving and uh, get a starting position and actually make more of an impact on the field. Uh, I know I left a, a lot of players out there and. Um, I just got to go get those plays this season. You know, I feel like if I handle what I'm supposed to do and uh, just handle my business, it'll help the team. You guys have uh, spring practices coming up, like those little the mini oh, camps coming yeah, up? Yeah, I have to report uh, in April, mid-April. Are you excited about that? I like, am excited. I am. Uh, I spoke with a, a D coordinator the other day, and uh, he's just as fired up as I am. So can't wait to get back out there. Us too. We miss you guys. I mean, I love the NFL. When it's gone, I'm like, man, yeah, this is the worst time it. of the year. Yeah. I need to see David Irving out there getting ready to blow somebody up, like Cam Newton. 
So is that field that you play on in, in Irving, is that intimidating? Because it's got, like, what, a 40-yard long TV screen above it, and everything just looks massive in that place. Yeah, uh, you know what's funny is when I'm practicing or playing, uh, I usually forget about everyone. It, it's weird. You would think we out there, you know, we'd know the crowd is around and everyone's yelling and screaming, but everyone seems to vanish. Everything goes away. Wow. He's trying to zone it all out and yes, sir. get locked in. Yes, sir. All right, that's David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys, formerly of San Jacinto High School. David, you, there's an open door for you. Anytime you want to come back on the show, we'd love to have you, man. You're great. Yeah. You're funny. We'd love to have you back on. I know you're BFFs now with and, David Zinko and, over and we'll here. See, and we'll see you at the uh, at the uh, the oh, National yeah. Football Foundation yeah. dinner in an, another couple weeks. So yes, he'll be around. We'll see him. Let me ask you this. Are you tight with Tony Romo? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty close with him. I, I wouldn't say we're... Uh, Super close, uh, as close as I am with all my uh, guys on the D-line. But uh, as I said, I'm cool. We're pretty much cool with everyone on the team. Okay. He'll, uh, say, he'll walk by and go, hey, Dave. Yeah, he'll say, hey, Dave. And I'm like, hey, oh, go. my God. It's so good. <laughs> 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 no, when he says, hey, Dave, say, you need a new shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you brought that up, Zink, and I brought up Romo because I may or may not have a Romo joke or two uh -oh. for you at the oh, banquet. Oh, Oh, at the so, banquet. Okay, at, yeah, the banquet. Like, oh, at the banquet. Oh, right he's now. Up. Not right I now. Have some comebacks. Then. Not right now. Just gonna give you a heads up. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that's David Irving of the Dallas Cowboys here on the Inland Sports Show. We appreciate the time, David. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thanks to Zinc for hooking it up. I mean, yes, you guys sir. break bread, you hang out, you don't even invite me, and then <laughs> that, at least you got that is an show. absolute falsehood, Pep. You were invited. You said no. I was at water polo. You'd Bold rather disclosure. watch water polo Bold than disclosure. than break bread with him. Now, I would not. Uh, now, I would rather go to water polo than break bread with David Irving. See that, Dave? I, it's uh, how he is, man. Someone's got to keep Inland Sports going. Let me just. Who's that, out there shooting video? Let me just uh, get you on point with him. So let's do this. <laughs> you're now one of his boys. Okay. So he'll he'll yeah. be talking about you and say, "Oh, my boy, David Irving." Okay. So now you're yeah. one of his boys. Nice. I appreciate I got, that. Yeah. See. Thank you. See this guy. He gets it. He gets it. <laughs> <laughs> we come back. We'll talk a little more NFL. We're gonna talk about the high school basketball playoffs. That's still to come on the one and only Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, third. Every sport that we offer here, the performance training is definitely specific to what they need. performance training and also we have our travel ball program with our softball and baseball teams. Our performance training definitely to get quicker, stronger, faster. Focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's, that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. Every sport that we offer here, the performance training is definitely specific to what they need. A 
of people actually come in here for the performance training and also we have our travel ball program with our softball and baseball teams. Our performance training definitely to get quicker, stronger, faster. focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going. Is David Irving the absolute best or what? He is. Very that nice guy, guy. That guy is so cool. Unassuming, huh? Yeah, he's a star player for the Dallas Cowboys. Just rolls in here like, hey guys, I'm just one of the guys. I play he Super even, Mario or whatever. He even went to the end of the line because he waited for other interviews to be done before he got his interview. Yeah. We're talking NFL guy. He wasn't even big time. He hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't fully gone into that NFL mode, which is great. Well, we've had a great show. David Irving was absolutely awesome. Dave Olson, the new head football coach at Vista Marietta, very great. busy Saturday with track. He called in, and then Cito's Marinas. We were just talking off the air. We got to have him back. He was great. He was, and I felt like uh, we kind. I mean, we not that we rushed him, but we definitely didn't give him the the airplay. We I'd like to. I'd like to talk to him some more. He's got a really good background, and I mean, he's coached around, man. He's you know he's been with uh, the Bruicks and, and and others. So I think it's it's for us to bring him back. Definitely. He's, he was a good dude, had good things to say, and I'm excited what he's going to do uh, with Harupa Hills. The Inland Sports Show brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website. Remax Advantage. Nobody sells more real estate. Nobody. 909-307-5665. And Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. We love you, Spoiled. You're the very best. Um, we've got to talk a little high school basketball playoffs. Tell you who's still alive, who's playing for titles. But first, we want to keep it on that football theme for just a moment and talk about Corey Harkey. Ran into Corey Harkey. He's training with Leonard Russell at Adrenaline Athletic Training. And he played four seasons with the Rams in St. Louis. Now they've moved to Los Angeles. And, and Corey is very optimistic that he's going to re-sign with the Rams. And, Zig, we've talked about this. <clears throat> My theory is... Because of all the talent and guys from Southern California at the high school level who have gone on to reach the NFL, they all want to go back home and play football for their hometown team, the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams might actually be turning guys away because they're going to have the pick of the litter. All these guys will want to come back to Los Angeles, am I right? Yeah, which is ironic because, remember, our good friend Leonard Russell actually got tra himself traded to the Rams, right? Because he wanted to play in L.A., and four months into <laughs> yes. working out with them, they moved to St. Louis. So he's on the other end of that, and now Corey Harkey's trying to be that guy that's a Southern California guy. I know he's bought a place in Riverside, uh, working, working out at Adrenaline. He'd like to stay in Southern California. Chino Hills kid. Yeah, lives in Riverside. Chino Hills played at UCLA. Right. And four seasons with, Six, with the Rams. 6'4", 260. He's a tight end fullback, and he's a massive guy. When I looked at him, I thought he was like a defensive tackle. And he's a tight end fullback. And, you know, he's caught a couple touchdowns in the NFL. I mean, he's a good player. He probably has some options. But he wants to come back to Los Angeles and play for the Rams now that they've moved. And he's an unrestricted free agent. So it's going to be a minute before he gets picked up. And it'll depend upon what the Rams do with some other. I was reading up on what people think is going to happen. I would imagine he's probably coming back. Why would he buy a place in Riverside if he's if he's not gonna if he doesn't feel like he has no chance to go to the Rams you know if he's gonna have to go somewhere else and live he's probably gonna have his agent push to make that happen he's already because he's already said I really want to come back I mean and he's a known commodity with the Rams they know what they're getting with him yeah and, and that's an interesting position you know it's kind of a that's a real hybrid position that he plays so he can do a lot of things great yeah. hands obviously because he's catching touchdowns and a big body to block with and and he can run the football too so he wouldn't have him at fullback if he couldn't that's true. Very true. Anything uh, Corey Harkey related we need to get to? No, we were just well, going to make sure that we brought up the point that we've got now a, an L.A. Ram who lives, well, a, hopefully an L.A. Ram, yeah. lives in Riverside. 
and training at Adrenaline Athletic Training with Michael Eubank, former Centennial quarterback, and some other guys. If you want to see video and the interview with Corey, it's on the Inland Sports website, inlandsports.wordpress.com. You can see him talking about his desire to re-sign with the Rams. And uh, like he said, you know, he's never gone through free agency, doesn't know what the process is like, but he's still optimistic he'll come back to the Rams and play in Los Angeles. It'll be good. Good. good if he does, too. That'd be great. So we're happy for uh, Corey Harkey. We're also happy to see the return of the Inland Sports All-Star Basketball Game. It's coming up April 15th at Norta Vista High School. Right now, you can tweet in your nominations. I already sent a short list to Jeff Gorm at Norta Vista High School of guys, seniors, who are good enough, strong enough, Gosh darn it. And people like them. So really, yeah, it's, it's so, somewhat of a popularity contest. Because you go on social media, you tweet the Inland Sports Show, your nominations, and we hand them over to the powers that be, the organizers. And the coaches will obviously have some input of who's going to play. But once again, the Inland Sports All-Star Basketball Game, April 15th. Please tweet us your nominations at Inland underscore sports and tell us who you'd like to see in the game. Just got to be seniors. That's the only criteria is they have to be a senior. All right, high school hoops, we've got about five minutes real quick. We never have enough time. We say this every single week. It's, it's high school hoops and soccer. I, There's some interesting soccer, You're right, too. you're right, you're right. I'm not trying to ignore soccer. You no, know, you I'm are. I'm a soccer guy. You are. I'm just sticking up for him. You want, your, you want your soccer report? I'll give you your soccer report. The Rancho Verde, Arupa Hills, and who's the other? Oh, and Redlands East Valley. Three boys soccer teams in the semis. Three girls soccer teams in the semis. Grand Terrace, Bloomington, and King. Boom. About ten good seconds of soccer. And, and the best you part about, an hour. The best part about that we talked about yesterday. Sunkiss League has two semifinalists in a division. Isn't that cool? That's great. That's as you know, low. That says a lot, man. You got Bloomington and uh, Grand Terrace. All right, is that enough soccer? Are you happy now? Can we, can we move, move on? All right, we got four minutes. All right, so boys basketball. We've got you want to know who's <laughs> in the finals, right? That's what you want to know. JW North will play Long Beach Poly for the Division I AA Championship. North going uh, on the road and beating Bosco last night in the semifinals. Convincingly. Yeah. The Rancho Verde lost to Long Beach Poly, although they had the Jackrabbits on the ropes. I mean, they almost won on the road at Poly. That would have been huge to have North and Rancho Verde in the finals. Sounded like turnovers late also didn't help them. Low scoring as usual. They love those low scoring defensive battles, 47-44. Um, in Division 1A, Temecula Valley will meet Santa Monica for the title. Temecula Valley beating Camarillo last night. Final score of 65-62. We have highlights from that game on the Inland Sports website. So if you want to see the Golden Bears beating Camarillo, you can check out that video as well. In fact, I think I might have some right here. I might, I might just punch them up. I don't know. So uh, Cam yeah, Camarillo gets Temecula Valley, so Temecula Valley was at home. They get the win. They move on to the D1 fi D1A Finals against Santa Monica. And the, the actual dates, because it could be a Friday or Saturday, and the time will uh, be finalized on Monday. So, But they are in the finals. They will play for the CIF Championship. Meanwhile, uh, our friends at Woodcrest Christian lost in the semifinals in 5A to St. Joseph of Santa Maria. Uh, Kaiser lost in the 2A uh, two double A uh, semifinals, so they're out. So really, all we have left is North Temecula Valley and Rancho Christian playing in the five A CIF championship game. It, it's something really quick on wrestling. I don't know if you caught this, but at the Masters meet, Temesco Canyon trying to help a kid cut weight ended up getting a late start to get to. I'm trying to think where they're having that. Oh, is it at the um, Master? Uh, it's at the uh, Business Bank Arena. Yeah, yeah. At Business Bank Arena. They showed up. Four minutes late for weigh-in, and were DQ'd the whole team. No. And they were expected to go a long way. And so a lot of those yeah. individuals, like Austin Quickie, would be going to state oh, likely. Man, He's got no shot Zink. now. I'm just I'm telling you yeah. what happened yesterday. Right here, That man. is rough. Oh. Four minutes late. It's like leaving a party early. And well, you should, the coach was totally stand-up. He, he took it all on his chin. He totally stand up. You the quotes that he had, I was I felt really bad for him because he's got like what, twelve, thirteen guys going, what the That's rough. It is. That, that's a tough pill to swallow. Uh Javier, you got twenty good seconds to tell me about UCR women's basketball and Brittany Crane becoming the all time leading scorer in UCR history. Go. Go. Yeah, well they they they're playing uh my my team, CSUN, women's basketball team and our team is obviously in rebuilding stage. So UC Riverside had their, their way with uh, CSUN the other night. 
and Brittany Kennedy, they got, obviously got the big win on yeah. the road at CSUN. What do they call it, the Matador Arena? Or? Yeah, Matador. Matador. She you became go. the all-time leading all -time scorer. All-time leading scorer at UC Riverside, and she is JW North girl. Yep. So, and also, real quick, UCR men's basketball won at Hawaii. First time ever. First place Hawaii. Way to go, Cuts. They come on the show, boom. Big time win, Jalen Bland, 20 points. We're their lucky charm, man. Now let's see what they do tonight. If they win tonight, they'll do that double we were talking about yeah. on the show last weekend. I think we are good luck. Hey, everything's brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training. AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website. Remax Advantage. Nobody sells more real estate. Nobody. 909-307-5665. And spoiled quick quality oil change. We love you, Bill Navigato. Man, what a great show. You can watch it again online on the Inland Sports YouTube channel. Until then, we will see you next Saturday, 11 a.m. The Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 a.m.